Yo, so guys, I'm Fire here, back with another video, and here to be hopping into another gameplay here in Madden 24. If you guys did not, make sure you go check out the video I posted yesterday. It's on a pretty good passing offense, but today we're going to be focusing on one of the um, things that you guys always love the most, and that's going to be a quarterback run scheme here in Madden 24. So, we're going to be using Baltimore. Obviously, you need a mobile quarterback. We are going to be using um, our boy Lamar Jackson. And he definitely fits that description. Now we are going to be running the pistol strong slots formation. This is actually in the Baltimore Ravens offensive playbook conveniently enough. And there's some really good run plays. We have triple option. We have a Ravens read option. We have power. Oh, we have a halfback dive. We have PA levels, PA boot LT, uh, and just a ton of really good plays. We have a few RPOs. This formation is honestly stacked. Uh, and you guys will see me incorporate a lot of these runs. So you see, I have read option dive, uh in my audibles and we're gonna start with a little read option here now read option is gonna be one of the best runs in this game and that is because the defensive end if if he's gonna leave his you know his qb defense on conservative pretty much what's gonna happen is the d end is gonna be taken out of the play every single time and that makes it a lot easier to run the ball it takes out one of those d linemen on every given play here's a look at the power o um I'm just gonna hand it off here we're gonna get a little bit of a good mix here between keaton mitchell and gus edwards now as far as your other running back spot goes you could have a fullback like a patrick ricard there you could have a tight end in that spot you can also have a fast running back so i would get someone like a franco harris that's good at blocking that is athletic enough to actually still carry the ball if needed as we're going to go back to the read option here and again you see handing it off and even though it seems like the defense played that play actually well. We pick up four yards, so that is still overall success. Now, you see, we're just going to take out um, Ricard for this specific play. Now, I wouldn't do these subs for specific plays because that is a dead-on tell that, hey, I might be running the triple option as we are right here. Now, for triple option, pretty much what you're going to do is just hold that A button. That's going to hand it off to JK. If you don't hold that, then you're going to get that little... You know speed option then between lamar and your other running back but here we're in kind of a passing situation a third and four we could still run the ball here but one thing i like about this formation is you can incorporate some motion especially motioning that running back from behind lamar this turns it into a gun trips tight end formation actually which is pretty cool so we have a little wheel drag slant i'm expecting man coverage all the way here and it is so we just threw a bunch of man coverage beaters um out there we have a drag slant mark andrews he's gonna do good enough and again if you're running the ball at the success that you should be uh you shouldn't need to do some crazy passing concepts and you see we had pretty much a lot of people open there uh now one thing about the dive that i do like is just the way lamar hands it off especially if you have it going to the left with a right-handed qb and you'll see some things i will do just to be extra these little fake audibles um just fake hot routes uh, on any running play, you can still hot route a receiver. Technically, it's obviously not going to change the way he does anything. But from a defensive perspective, if I see the quarterback pointing out 20 hot routes, I'm immediately just expecting pass a little bit more than run. And I know it's a little bit annoying and a little bit extra to do, but it's not out of the ordinary. So here we go. Triple option. And uh, we would have had our pitch there. We just weren't able to get it off in time. So we actually get tackled there and this is an unfortunate situation if you, there's one thing you want to try and avoid out of something like this it is going to be uh these third and longs because you only have a certain amount of plays that you can go to here we're going to go with a wheel drag if you guys watched the video yesterday you know that's one of my favorite combos we have a backside post he's going to send some pressure so we're just going to check it down here and this combo just works beautifully we stop on a dime we actually almost make a miss we do make a miss and that is a big time pass there for about 30 yards or so. Now, again, you want to try and avoid those third and longs. Uh, and one thing that you can also do in this playbook, we're only really scratching the surface. Uh, one thing that you can do is actually go ahead and as we run this dive here and look at the blocks we got there. A little bit of stick work to get past that first guy again. But um, yeah, so... Well, I just lost my train of thought. That's unfortunate. But here, he's going to be in goal line. And, uh, damn, I'm trying to remember what I said. I don't, can't remember. Mm. 
all right so anyways go into the read option here we're actually gonna keep it with lamar and boom look at that stick work right there able to make a few people miss and actually get into the end zone so with lamar, oh what i was just i just remember what i was gonna say but that's really good stick work there honestly not a great play call against that set that he had but we ended up making it work eight runs two passes but going back to what i actually remember what i was gonna say is we're not even scratching the surface on this playbook um, obviously we're really just running one pistol formation. There's about 10 pistol formations and then all there's all these gun formations. Some things you can actually do. You can audible down to under center sets. You can get some of these really good runs like stretches and some of those other things in actual single back sets. Because again, it's only a two receiver formation. It's a two running back, one tight end. So you could even have some I form options potentially as well. Um, so it can be interesting if you have a tight end on the field instead of that running back then you can also incorporate some of those two tight end sets so there's a lot of audible potential obviously there's a few other gun sets and a few other pistol sets that you can direct audible to but um it's typically going to be more of those run sets but again basically i'm saying that this formation is obviously probably the best i think in the out of the pistol options but you can audible and there's a lot of really good passing plays especially so don't be limited now defensively we're running a dime here and he's gonna come out guns a blazing trying to throw this ball and he tests the man kyle hamilton that's not a thing that i would do we end up getting that interception on him and we already get the football back here so um but yeah for an example you can see you can audible from the strong slot to the strong that's a simple audible and there's a few other good run plays like the triple option split that i actually like a lot you have a power option you have a, well there's actually i think a few triple options here if i'm not mistaken triple option switch triple option slip so you have you actually give yourself a few more audibles in doing that and honestly you see all the only difference is the tight end is going to switch sides obviously one of your receivers is going to come over but this run is going to be very interesting because it's just a different way to run the triple option. You're going to, you know how in the other triple option you hand it off to the guy on Lamar's hip. Now you actually hand it off to the guy behind Lamar. And that other guy from the other side that's on Lamar's hip is actually going to run behind him. So this run is very solid and it has a lot of potential. And you can see just changing to something like that will create a new way to block. So here we're going to audible. And I didn't get the playoff in time because I think I accidentally had two clock on for whatever reason. Not the smartest move, but uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and audible again here. I guess not actually. Let's go. We're gonna, I think we're going to try and pass. Just look at this look. I'm thinking X can potentially get open deep here or we can hit B in the flat and we're just going to check that to OBJ. And there's no corner over the top of him. You either look for that cloud flat immediately or hard flat on that side if it's not there you can check it down to the flat if it does there then you know that streak's going to be open so that's just an easy simple read against a 4-4 split defensive formation so again here we're looking at our audible options we're going to go to and you see we have actually three triple options out of here we're going to go to a traditional triple option i believe here and actually generally with this motion all that's happening is the receiver is actually just going to the opposite side and boom, we actually get a big hole. And Patrick Ricard, again, he's slow as hell, but he is not actually that terrible in the running game. You see, he can kind of air truck. So he's not the worst thing ever when you think about it. Here is a little RPO, the stretch alert dragon, uh, where you can hit this flat route. It's just something to mix it up. And again, this is going to be good against those sets where it's like a 3-4, 4-3, one of those formations where there's not going to be a defensive back over the top of him unless they're in man coverage and they're man aligned typically and in this case he's base aligned so we are more than happy to run those types of plays here just gonna go with the dive we had a lot of success with it earlier now we're gonna just motion and again this probably wasn't the smartest motion but it actually ends up paying off as you see it changes the blitzing angle from number two on defense he ends up taking a looping angle because he's in a looping blitz and that actually creates a lot of space so again run this dive play a lot even if the box is stacked there was eight people in the box on that play and it did not matter um and again just doing things in the run game 
you'll see if a pro player is ever running the ball. This seems seem to be more of like the meta a few years ago than maybe this year, but it still applies. And uh, you see, <laughs> turning the music down there. Um, but it still does apply. And what I mean by that is you're just going to, you try and find these runs against certain sets that you're playing. So I noticed that this dive worked earlier. It worked again. This would be a run that I would continue to, you know, use throughout this game over and over and over again, because it's something that I found that works against the defense. So a lot of times on your first few drives of a game, you're going to be trying to find that one run that's working. That's giving him a ton of problems. Uh, here he's going to go play action out of the deuce close. Check it down. Not a bad pass there from him. Um, and again, defensively, you guys have seen me a lot more this year than other years. I've switched my defenses up kind of a lot. So we're running a lot of match recently. Let me know what you guys are running on defense. Um, if you guys are having any specific success, because I haven't really found something that I've been super comfortable in sticking in all year. Obviously, you have your basic things, nickel over dollar, your nickel three threes of the world. But for consistency purposes, they haven't been great. As here, we get a really good match coverage. And again, this is why I love match coverage because it looked like that might've been a curl flat. He thinks it was too. And he ends up throwing it over the top and he ends up getting picked off on our quarter flat that matches because it's not a curl flat. So it is gonna actually play that um, assignment. Now we're gonna throw in another game here against the New York Jets. Now we are starting on defense and spoiler alert by the time and length that's remaining in this video. Um, there is no more offense, but, um, I just figured I would throw something else in there because I felt like that was a pretty short game, which obviously it was. So I always feel bad when a game is cut short in like the second quarter. Uh, so we just ended up recording another game here. Now I did just flip the way the flip the videos, but I, um, this was this first game was recorded and then I recorded that last game after, but I just threw it on the end here because again, no um, offense in this video. Now defensively, I could be running something completely different in this video. And again, let's see, we're gonna be still running dime normal. So I was in a dime normal phase. Now, the reason I don't know exactly kind of what's happening right now, I'm almost commentating over it the same way you guys are watching it is because these were recorded probably about a month ago. So take that with a grain of salt. Obviously all these plays that I'm showing work the exact same. No stupid patches are gonna ever affect the way that like these plays and these runs work unless I'm showing some kind of a crazy meta blitz. So everything that's shown, and again, defensively, we're not running any crazy blitzes. We're running match coverage. So everything is gonna work the exact same. I don't know that if there was a patch, I don't pay attention, but um, these patches, they don't change anything besides the one big thing that they were intended to. And how is that ball, uh, completed ever? I mean, we just set up the perfect defense that match covers the quarter flat kind of starting on that left or middle side and actually traveling over to the right. And he was just in a perfect position. Uh, and Brandon Stevens there just reacted like an absolute snail, but our first priority here against this deuce close is going to be to stop the run. Now a bad user there kind of prevents us from doing that. But against these under center sets, focus on stopping the run first. You have to get him out of the run. Um, you want to make him pass because passing from under center is obviously going to be really uncomfortable. It takes someone who's played certain formations under center for years to really be comfortable in passing situations under center. Because again, it's just the quarterback. You're a little bit closer to the pressure because you're taking the same step drop. So if someone's running under center and that was a good user there, but if someone's running under center and they don't have good pocket presence, you'll see them get really frantic in the pocket. They'll throw it early. They'll throw it into coverage because they just feel the pressure. And especially if they're a, a guy that's used to passing in shotgun and you know, a lot of people in shotgun, I do this myself also occasionally, depending on what formation I'm using. Is I take typically really far drops just to give myself an extra few seconds of time so if they're that type of player then they're gonna feel a lot more uncomfortable in single back because even if you take that longer drop you're still like kind of right in that position where the dn's loop but he ends up uh looking to punt here and we were actually close to blocking that i was surprised that squeeze blocked worked 
as good as it did, but not a great punt. You got to put some backspin on that champ and uh, nothing doing there. So here we go to setting up our audibles. And again, obviously, there's a lot of really good formations in here. You see strong wing, weak slot, weak slot open is kind of one I like. And I think I'm actually, I was going to set up audibles. He ends up pausing here. Um, let me know what you guys are running on offense right now. I have not been like watching any Twitch Madden or Madden YouTube. I have about zero clue on what the meta is besides what I face online. And again, we haven't played much online recently, seeing as these games were recorded about a month ago. Um, but let me know what the meta kind of is right now. Obviously, bunch is meta on offense. I'm 90% sure still. But defensively, things change fast every single week and every single month of this game. A new pro player finds a new blitz. It works. And sooner rather than later, the entire community is running it. So um, maybe I should do some research, find that out for you guys, try and drop a video on it. Um, but it, again, timing is everything. So we'll see what happens. But you see, we're still setting up our audibles. I'm going to actually burn a timeout here. And we're just kind of exploring this Ravens playbook. The weak slot is kind of similar to the strong slot. Um, obviously, just very simple differences. But the run plays are very good. And you see, I'm really just kind of going through here and finding the plays. Now, clearly he gets pissed off and doesn't have the time for it as he ends up really just quitting here and turning off his Xbox. But you can see just how many, like, and we're setting up our audibles for the strong slot, which again, is going to be your best formation in this, but the weak slot option is good. The strong is good. The strong eye wing is good. And the weak slot, whatever other option is good. So but that's going to do it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel down below, and peace. I'm out of here.